All right, Phil Perry, how you doing? Doing great. Feeling great. Are you? Yeah. You yeah. don't look great. Thanks, though. You sound a little <laughs> right stuffy. Right back at you, buddy. You sound a little stuffy. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Travel yeah. to do that. Yeah. That happens. All right. That time of year. Yeah. Welcome into the program. Where do you want to start on last night's game, Phil? I'll leave this up to you. You heard Drake May a moment ago and what he's going to do in terms of his approach going forward. But what do you want to talk about? Yeah, I would just say, for me, big picture, the biggest disappointment of last night's game is just that they didn't show up. There's no energy. They were lacking effort. They were missing tackles. The one area where I felt like this team was really suited to bring it every week, it's not offensively. We know what they are there. It's not, you know, schematically, that's still very much an unknown, new staff and everything. I just thought they were going to be the kind of team that would show up every single week and you would understand what you're getting from a toughness and competitiveness and energetic standpoint. And that was completely lacking last night. And that, to me, was maybe the saddest part of that performance. It was sort of a sad night. It was it was kind of pathetic across the board. And that's not to be derogatory, because I know these guys are out there and they're banged up and it's a short week and they're on the road. I get it. But... Boy, I don't. I can't remember an offensive line performance as bad as they have been over the course of the last few years. That was as bad as last night. Defensively, all of those missed tackles early in that game. It felt like the Jets' offense did whatever it wanted. I'm I'm not sure there's a single thing you could point to in that game last night. Maybe aside from getting Pop Douglas involved. Okay, congratulations. Where you'd look at it as a Patriots fan or Patriots follower and say they did a good job there. Is there one? Am I missing something? I don't have one. Did I lose it in the in the fog of my drive down the Merritt Parkway? Oh, Up funny. the Merritt Parkway? In the rain. Huh? Like the Which trees? direction was I going? <laughs> it's like the trees in the middle. Isn't it nice? It's a beautiful drive. It's a nice little drive. It's it's a beautiful really, day. Yeah. Got a great day yesterday for it, too. Cute little rest stops on that road. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't stop, though. Yeah, I had no, to get just, to the show here. I just yeah, pulled no, in. No, oh, I, hear yeah. I hear you. I hear you. No it's stopping. money to be made. Come on. I hear Had a couple conference calls. Wow. It's doing the old-fashioned, the dial-up conference call. Who do you conference call in? Well, it was Gerard Mayo oh, to Marcus Covington. That's right. That's right. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. You just did the audio only? Did the audio only. I eventually kind of figured it out, but there you go. Yeah, old school. Anything perk up uh, to you today, uh, response-wise, any of the coaches or coordinators? Well, I am curious on on uh, how you guys feel about the quarterback situation. Well. Because he made it very clear, Draw did, that he wants Jacoby Brissett to be his quarterback until he says. for the here and now, right? This I week. I don't think it was a ringing endorsement beyond, like, the next – I don't know, 10 days. This week. Quarter, this, which right. is 10 quarter, days to right. the next game. I mean, he's not committing to him long term. He's, well, he he's our he's, quarterback until I say he's not. Yeah. So that, that's an indication of he could say he's not in the relatively near future. Here. Oh, yeah. No, what I expected is that it would be Jacoby Brissett starting again against San Francisco. But I think we are inching toward, maybe marching toward Drake May starting for this team. That was not a decision last night. Putting Drake May in, I don't think that was a decision they made lightly. I don't think mm. that was willy-nilly, heat of the moment, oh, what the hell, throw Drake in. I think that was a meaningful thing that they did with Drake May. I think it was done with purpose, and I think that purpose is they're getting ready to play him. Seen enough, he's inching closer. Seventy. But, he's already confirmed the 70-30. And I don't he think, didn't have to do that. Yeah, I don't think it's because they think Jacoby Brissett has done a bad job. I think it's because they just realize, wow, we only have so few interchangeable parts on this offense that might give us something of a different result. I think everybody points to the most position on the, the biggest and most important position on the field. It's quarterback. That's what teams do. Sure. And I think they're going to be a team that does that. And that's the position where if you upgrade there, it can raise all boats, right? That's that's just the nature of the gig. Um, but it's been it's been clear they're trying to get him ready to play, right? They've been open with the number of practice snaps they're giving him. So... I think you're right in one sense. and the other, I'm not necessarily looking at that and saying, oh boy, they are now expediting the process. I think last night is games out of hand. They had a variety of starters out. So, you know, it's a different conversation. Tight end, you know, Hunter Henry's out of the game, though. Ramondre Stevenson's out of the game. It's clearly out of hand. And you can get him some, some extra work. You can get him some reps under the guise of, well, the game's out of hand. We're not, we're not stirring up a controversy here. We can pop back in front of a microphone 12 hours later and say, Jacoby's our quarterback, and do it with a straight face because the game was over, and we were just trying to get the guy in, and it was mop-up duty. And so I don't know if I am reading as much into it 
as you are, but they are trying. I I won't push back on that. They are trying to get him ready to play. But that's but that's, that's been the case. I think we all have understood that they're no, trying to get him ready to game, play this year. You you would agree that a game situation and real live reps in a game are far different than taking practice reps on plays, as we heard last night uh, from Burt Breer on the broadcast, that the plays they're letting Drake May run in practice are plays that they know Jacoby Brissett is very comfortable with and doesn't need the reps on. Those are the plays that they've been giving to Drake May in practice. And you throw them into a game situation, that's that's different. I mean, you're not practicing against your own players. You're not practicing against your own defense. You're practicing against guys that are happy to come in to the backfield and absolutely bury you. It's just different. The speed of it's different. It's different, but it's it consistent with their approach, which is we're getting him ready to play this year. At what point in time, they, I don't know. But they could have just have easily not played him in that game last night. Did and what, I don't think anybody did, would have questioned that. So how did your opinion on their plan change last night? Oh, I'm, I'm loving them today. No, but but <laughs> what, how did the timeline change in your mind based on last night? The timeline changed in the sense that they're going to, I think, going to have this situation on their hands again in San Francisco. Mm. And he's now just weeks away from being the guy. That could very well be the case. Yeah, I don't think it. For me, I've assumed that October would be the spot on the calendar. So I don't think we're all that far off. We're doing that thing we always love to do, you and I, Beetle, which is argue about something that we generally speaking agree upon. I think it's charming. <laughs> yeah, it's nice that little thing that we have. Yeah. Um. But I, I would not be scrambling to play him. And if you heard, I don't know if you guys had a chance to do this because we literally just got off the horn with him. But Alex Van Pelt was even a little bit stronger about he feels it's better for Drake May to watch. That the better developmental plan for Drake May is to watch rather than to play. And he said it very frankly. I I it's been so refreshing to listen to Alex Van Pelt at the at the podium. You mentioned he's got head coaching vibes. He totally does. Behind a microphone. Uh, it's I don't even know if it's that. It's just he is frank. He's honest. He's up front. He took blame for the game plan last night. They tried to run play action early because they felt they had established the run through two weeks of the regular season, which I agreed with him on. I was here on Touch Red Hardy the other day. I said, they should run play action on the first play. They did. It almost was a disaster. They were lucky they completed the pass and went for zero yards. Um, but he took he took you know the responsibility and the accountability of, of having a bad offensive night last night. So it's been a lot of fun to listen to him. But that was part of, I thought that was maybe the biggest takeaway from his presser today. He's not dying to have Drake May play anytime soon. He should, because I think Drake May is the only guy who can save his job. Because I don't think this is going to work. This is going to look dreadful week after week. And yes, their offensive line is horrible. Yes, Elliot Wolf left Alex Van Pelt and Gerard Mayo high and dry. I don't think it will stop him from being the fall guy. I don't think it will. And he should at this point start to realize he's going to get overruled on this. It's going to be Gerard Mayo who tells him we're switching quarterbacks and we're going to go with. We're going to go with uh, Drake May over Jacoby Brissett. That is going to happen. You think it's October. I think it's October. I think that's going to happen. He should start warming up to the idea. Isn't and all the people clutching their pearls today and last night, as I've said, that are just, oh, they just can't wrap their heads around the idea of Drake May playing in a football game this year. They're, they're struggling with it. They're mm. struggling since last night. I think he's one of those people, and I think he should start to start to find a way to wrap his head around it. It's happening. Yeah. It is coming down the pike. So get ready. Put put yourself and put that player in the best position because you're going to need to do that to save yourself. Isn't it? Fun? I know we got to go, but isn't it funny? Like the difference a play or two in week two makes on our entire perspective. Now we're talking about people losing their jobs after week three, and I get it. That's like the nature of the gig. That's what we do. No, if I it was continues talking about in the preseason, <laughs> 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 okay, no, I give, give me credit, credit for that. Yeah. I'll give, give me credit. Gasper and I came up with the but list. But if they of if they OC don't allow the a season. field goal to get blocked for the season, yeah, right. and if they don't blow a a cover zero look, they're two and zero, oh, and a Thursday loss in New York is just sort of a blip on the radar, and it's sort of a fluky thing. And oh, they're two and one, and it's Thursday night, and you give them a pass, and now we're talking about expediting timelines for the rookie quarterback. We're talking about the offensive coordinator might not like it's two plays. That's all it is. That's just, it, it blows my, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's, that's the difference. That's the opportunity or that's the, that's the situation they left on the table last week. That's why you can't leave those winnable games on the table. They, the way they did last week, because now it's panic button time four days later. It's wild, but it's fun. This is what we do. It is. Let's talk about the offensive line, Phil Perry. 
your review of their performance. <laughs> it's about as bad as I've seen. And I'm just looking at some of the next-gen numbers right now. You want to guess the pressure rate last night? Um, 60%. It's a good guess. Anybody else? Okay, 56.5%. That was uh, pretty close. Really close. I, I, was gonna, I was shooting six out of ten times. Devastatingly bad. Unsustainably bad. Like, How do you stop it? Like, like it's, we know it's emergency bad. level bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, Zoe. I, I don't know how you do it because like they I know it. going into this week, I called for like scheme to help. Hey, throw more screens. They did. Use more motion at the snap. You know, just try to they put did. some doubt in pass rushers' minds so that they're not just tearing yeah. ass upfield. Yeah. I don't know what you do now. You're on to technically your fourth left tackle and your fourth left guard if you want to include Cole Strange. So you went from Strange to City So to Michael Jordan to now Zach Thomas finished the game at left guard for you last night. Mm. And that's not Hall of Fame linebacker Zach Thomas. That's... So so Jordan and, and Caden Wallace uh, hurt their knees, right? So the both of those guys guy. ended the game injured. Right. So you went from uh, Chooks core four 12 snaps with him. Nice mm-hmm. job. Vidarian Lowe, Caden Wallace. And then last night it was uh, Demontre Jacobs. Tim. Nice. You know anything about Demontre Jacobs' guess, game? Guess I have never he heard that name in my life, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. I don't blame you. I cover the team every day. I think I've seen him five times. So, I mean, he's a large human being. I think he's 6'9", 380. So he's hard to miss, but he's a practice squad journeyman type of player. So I don't know what you do, Zoe. I don't know how you fix it. I, mean, I don't know had, if there is a fix. You had six guys active for a receiver. Like, you're already anticipating we're not great at receiver and we're not trusting really the veterans right now. So let's get Booty out there. Like, you put him in the game. Like, you still, you're still not getting any production out of Thornton. I know he drew a penalty on a long one, and he I gave him credit for fighting through it because he had his arm grab. And you got to do enough to show the ref that, hey, I, I'm being impeded here. He did that. But, like, there's no chance of him in that cover two ball down the right sideline. He's not going to elevate to catch that and tap it. And Jacoby hung that too far, too high. Like, there's so many elements of the passing game that are just futile. So the, the the real issue for them offensively, I mean, there's obviously a lot of issues. I shouldn't say the real issue. But they obviously just can't even play the style of game that that game turned into last night, which is they're behind and they're chasing yeah. points. Yeah. They can't do it. They can't live in that world. My, my biggest what if, and there aren't many because they just got so thoroughly dominated. My biggest what if from that game, is second and seven. It's the drive right after the Jets scored their first touchdown. So it's seven nothing. The game is still within reach. Second and seven, play action. Jacoby Brissett has Austin Hooper open on a deep over route going toward the sideline. Yeah. And he throws a foul ball. He he throws it to the wrong side of the red stakes. It is it's not even within arm's reach. It's completely uncatchable. They get sacked on the next play, and then the the ball is rolling downhill on them. That's the one throw, and there are probably more if you're Alex Van Pelt and you're T.C. McCartney and you've got a better eye for this thing than I do. But that's one throw I could see them going back to, Beetle. And whenever they do decide to make the change, I wonder if that type of miss sticks out in their mind. Because as well as Jacoby Brissett has done not to throw interceptions, this offense is so stagnant that missing an open throw like that one down the field I think hurts you almost as much as a pick does because you you just don't have the opportunities to hit on those. And if you miss them, if you whiff on them, if you don't even put them on the body of the guy, you're killing your offense. And so that's what, if, if that had gone a little differently, now they're on the precipice of scoring range. Maybe it's 7-3, maybe it's 7-7. Maybe the game plays out differently. Maybe you're able to stick with the run a little bit more. And maybe you're able to keep it closer at halftime, and the whole thing looks a little bit different. But that was my big what if from last night, and I thought it sort of highlighted one major weakness in Brissett's game. Uh, when you started talking about next gen stats and pressure rates, Alex Barth immediately went to work. He Atta writes. Boy. He writes that according to next gen stats, Jacoby Brissett faced a 56.5 percent pressure rate last night. That's the highest pressure rate. They have for a Patriots quarterback in a single game since Cam Newton in week 14 of the 2020 season against the Rams. In that game, Cam Newton was 9 of 16 
for 119 yards, no touchdowns, a pick, four sacks, and the pressure rate of 59.1%. The Patriots also lost that game 24-3. to That's a pick six on the screen, right? That game. Oh, yeah, good, good memory on that. So That was about as bad a game you could play. I don't even remember that. Oh, yeah. But it hasn't been that long, I guess, since we have seen an offensive line performance like that one. Yeah, and yeah. so it just reminds you that they've been trying, as a front office, to reconstruct this offensive line for four years. Which is why I chuckle when people think they're going to snap their fingers next March, and all of a sudden yeah. the Patriots' offensive line for year two of Drake May is going to be great. It's going to be so wonderful. They're going to be able to protect them. This takes years. It does. It, should, it shouldn't take this long they're they're it, they've been building since 2020 yeah, yeah. and you know what Wrongly. elliot wolf and uh, matt grow they've been here they're not new to the operation they've been in on those picks boy and they're that's that's god it's just so Something disappointing blame, uh, they're the you same blame bill they're for the same offense no, you yeah. can't final call was bill I, i'm not yeah. trying to i'm just saying that these guys have been involved in the uh, in the effort to try and find offensive linemen and now teams are going to do what they've done the last several years and what the Jets did last night, and I'll try to pull up the number here, but yeah. they blitzed a little bit last night. Not a ton, but he was he was blitzed, I guess, on 10 dropbacks, according to next-gen stats. And the Jets had all kinds of success. The, the one thing that might deter you from blitzing is that an offense could actually beat you over the top, which the Patriots obviously can't do. And so what's the harm? You might as well just send numbers at the line of scrimmage, play the run on the way to the quarterback. If they hand it off, you've got bodies there to stop it. If they don't, you're getting into the backfield and you're going to impact the throw. They're going to get blitzed and blitzed a lot, especially with the moving pieces up front. And so, again, that's a problem that I'm not sure has an answer. I was going to pick up a copy of the Packer Way to see if this I is I have one. You want to borrow it? Do you have it? Yeah, I do. I can borrow it? Yeah, not on me, but sure. Yeah, why don't you bring that in? Okay. I mean, I found I did find one uh, for four dollars and seventy six cents. Free shipping, free but media mail. It's kind of slow. Yeah, it might take a few weeks before I get it. I got you covered. But I, I think I should just have it as a reference to know, you know, when the offensive line continues to look this bad. If this is all part of the plan, if this is all part of Elliott's plan for the Patriots, we heard a lot about the Packer way in the off season and building a program, building a team. I don't think it's off to a good start, Phil. That's just my assessment. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think Demontre Jacobs at left tackle is part of the plan. No? Nah. Chooks was. Yes, that chapter got, not great. Chooks has plenty of time on his hands now. He could read the Packer way. He could kick back, relax, and I think he's going home with millions of dollars, so he, he can buy it full nope. retail, $17 on yeah. Amazon. He could get that thing primed to his house by the weekend to read the book and know what, what the hell's going on here. Look at Zoe. Yeah, I know. Look at Zoe. He's got his head down on the desk. He's I don't what's the matter? Nothing. You don't like me talking about Elliot I mean, Wolf? How many times are you gonna mention Pack the Packer way? The Packer uh, way. a thousand times if I have to, because I, I got I all of us had to collectively get hit over the head with it all off season long. This is more about So I think it's time to bring it back up. This, I think it's time is, to talk about this, the Packer this way. This is not again. his beef. This is more his beef with the with the local media. Well that's true. Coverage. Yeah. I have, I have yeah. beef but no, but my biggest issue is Elliot Wolf is not doing a good job. This is a problem. Malpractice on the offensive line. This is embarrassing. Does the team feel any shame or embarrassment for where they are? I, I get the sense that they don't, and that to me is one of the more alarming things. I'm talking from the top on down. I feel alarmed by that their lack of urgency and feeling any sort of shame about where this team has landed, how far they've fallen, how deep into the toilet they are at the moment. He's, he's, this is a big one. This is a big, big, big week for Mayo. Like he's gonna make sure he gets his team back on the back on the rails here, because you're three weeks in. And this is what I've always told you, and you know, bring up the 53 guys you can't fool in that room. When the defense lines up in practice, you're like, the offense running that again, huh? You know, that's the same Brown combination. Right? That was an you know? obleep kind of game last night. Yeah. So yeah. I can tell the way you're reacting. Reality to it today. Like, I oh, feel I feel last boy. night. And I know the, the game changes every week and you feel differently and we overreact the next day, whether it's a big win, like week one, or whether it's, you know, you blew one, you let one slide on, on Sunday. That one felt like 
reality check because of that quarterback, like that's the way the league's built. That's a great quarterback. He's great. He's elite. He's top five. And you, it wasn't close. Like your defensive game plan against him on a short week should have made him feel a little uncomfortable. And I got I get disturbed because Mayo starts his press conference with, you know, at nauseum, we told these guys, do not let him break containment, which tells you every walkthrough, every meeting, every film session, every practice, you rearrange the practice to go at night to get the lights and everything. Don't let him out. Don't let him out. And you know, every rep in practice was upfield, 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 and sit him in the pocket. He did what he wanted. He did what he wanted to do last night, off the back foot, sidearm. Like, even at the – he went inside the five and went gun and threw a quick out to uh, – to um, Lazard? Uh, no, not Lazard. Uh, Wilson? Uh, Wilson? Wilson. I'm sorry, Garrett Wilson, yeah. And, like, that's not a high percent throw right there. But he made it look easy. He loves those little right. look passes, those now passes, yeah. though. It yep. looks like it's a. it might actually be a run play called, and he says, no, that guy's playing off. I'm yeah. just going to sling it out yeah. there, see what happens. Well, one of those arms is a check, yeah, just right audible right down the last you know, I, th- I know he's not part of the pass rush, but I think not having Jawan Bentley, I think you lose some on-field discipline. It, it, and that showed it up. It doesn't allow time. Tavai to beat Tavai. Like when Bentley's in the middle, Tavai could sort of improvise a little bit, play outside, and McMillan will play outside. Now you're getting guys to kick inside that aren't really okay. We got a little more on our plate here. Yeah. Missed tackles, missed assignments. Right. Hey, if you like that clip, check out more videos from Zolak and Bertrand right here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.